So a friend of ours wanted us to um, visit her in Romania. And during our visit in Romania, she wanted to show us the different minerals that she had access to. And one of those minerals was Street. water. Huh? So we flew from Bucharest and we went into a place called Areta and then jumped in a van and Romania. proceeded on a 10 day long trip across the entire country of Romania. Uh, one of the stops was a village on the top of a mountain. Now I remember this village really well because this village in particular had never been conquered by anybody and they were really proud of it. I remember the old man sitting once we got up to the uh, hotel looking at him saying, you know, never been conquered, never been conquered. Well, they, you know, and I mean historically, not by the Romans, not by the Ottomans, not anybody. Well, while we were there, there was this young man I was introduced to named Milo. This is Milo. And his yeah. wife, yeah. Rita, <laughs> which I remember at the dinner table, we had all this food and they wouldn't eat but small portions of food and they would only, uh, they must have been vegetarians because they wouldn't eat any of the meat that was on the table. And I'm guessing that that was part of their secret because the next day we were setting out on a trip exactly. to go up a that. mountain that separated Romania from the Ukraine. And this was a historical passage through the two countries that Milo was going the to lead us uh, on. At the time, the snow was about Compacted four, now since maybe three and a half, four feet deep. And I'm not a small guy, so I'm like 290 pounds, 285 pounds, 275 if I've been running around just a little bit. But either way, that day, every time I took a step, I remember it. It was just slosh, slosh, slosh. And I would go down, like every step would take me down, boom, about three feet into the ground. So if you imagine I walked two miles back to the mountain, every single step going down three feet. It was pure hell. Then when we got to the mountain, I started up and realized that we got like three quarters of a mile to go. And I mean, on a vertical like this, man, just straight up the mountain. We, I, I was struggling up the hill. I think at some point I even forgot why in the heck I even went up this mountain. I just knew that I'm not a quitter. So I had to absolutely see it through. Uh, there was a guy with us named Gabriel. Won't forget him either because he had one arm and he was carrying his big stick that he had given to me because it seemed like I needed it more than he did. And before we got to the top, when he saw me struggling and falling in the snow so much, he walks down the hill and he kicks the snow from side to side, step. side to side, uh, in order to make a path for me so I can walk up the hill even better. Then when I get to the top of the mountain, I look over and I hear Milo say, Farouk champion. And I said, no, Farouk jump. jump. And then so <laughs> Milo, uh, then headed in and I asked him, I said, Vilo, tell me, man, how much farther do we have? And he says, well, we've got 300 meters. I said, okay, I, I can do 300 meters. And I started walking some more, still going in the snow after having walked almost three miles now. Um, then I said, Milo, how far do we have to go? He says, only 100 meters. So I said, okay, great. And I'm thinking, right, that's my motivation. I'm getting there. I said, Milo, how far do we have to go? He said, well, about 400 meters. And I'm like, what? 400 meters? Milo, are you serious? So... I said, I, I think I'm done, man. Um, I think I need to head back. And I started to, you know, give up on the entire thing and started to walk down the mountain. And I remember halfway through thinking, you know, what happened to Milo? What happened to Gabriel? Was it really that much farther? Um, you know, did it get worse? And in the corner of my eye, I see Milo and Gabriel coming down with this big old jugs of water. I had given Milo my camera to film where the water came from. So he had done that. And when he came down, he hands me my camera and he says, Farouk, you better be glad you quit, man. The snow was up to our, our necks, right above, our, right above our chins. And that's how we had to go through to get to that water. And he said, well, you know, go ahead and give it a shot. And took the water and I drank it. And I just remember that in drinking the water, it was the sweetest, most clean, most clear I've never tasted anything like that in my life. And I've never tasted anything like that in my life again. I, I've lived in the country. I've, you know, whatever. I, I just, I've never tasted water that pure. And now when I come home and I hear people talk about having a water problem and the fact that there are a lot of people suffering from not having clean water, the fact that even our water is not pure here where I live in the United States, 
I, I, I can say it's not because I know what really great water tastes like. And if I hadn't have tasted it, I wouldn't have the same level of motivation to actually change it. And I cherish that experience. I, I completely cherish that experience.